Yo, what is going on guys? Joe here from Echo Athletics, and as you can see by the title of this video, something a little different, but something I think uh, a lot of you guys can relate to and would be able to benefit from hearing, just to understand that you're not alone in this world in the way you feel, the way you kind of are interpreting your feelings regarding anxiety, depression, death, the way you should kind of go about these, what I've done, my experience, things that I've struggled with, I just want to go into that a little bit because I think there's a lot of things that I utilize in my own life that I think can help you guys at least gain some perspective. Now I'm going to preface this whole thing by saying I'm obviously not a therapist, I'm obviously not someone who is an expert on this, I don't feel like I'm able to prescribe anything to anyone in terms of even just techniques or anything like that, but what I'm saying is this is stuff that's worked for me through my struggles and I think that this could help and at least, like I said, give you some perspective change that really, I think, is the biggest difference in whether or not you're going to continue feeling the way you do down that negative snowball effect or whether or not you can kind of change things based on the way you think about life and the way you see your situation around you. And um, I guess starting out, guys, depression has been something that I've always felt like it's kind of looming in the background. I've never really been super depressed. I've never really been at a point where I feel super depressed, where I have, I'm able to say that I'm depressed or I'm in a depression. I'm, I'm thankful that I've never had that down spiral of, of negative emotions when it comes to depression. Now, anxiety, on the other hand, is something that I've always dealt with. Anxiety is something that I've dealt with since day one. If you guys watch my transformation video, you guys know that when I was in eighth grade, going into my freshman year, I was five foot tall and I was literally 90 pounds. So I was always short, I was always small, I was always told that I was small, and I knew it. So I was very insecure about that. Before I even knew what anxiety was, I think I was insecure about my size, insecure about things like that. Growing up, my family was great. I'm not gonna sit here and say that my mom and dad didn't give me any, every single thing that I could possibly want, and food, clothing, roof over my head, always cared about me more than anything. But my parents are not perfect human beings. There was a lot of fighting. There was a lot of things going on when I was younger that caused me to have a lot of anxiety and kind of led me to a point where I was just struggling with what was going on inside my head a lot of times, which caused me to go see a therapist multiple times in my life. I've seen a therapist, the same therapist, multiple times throughout high school and even into college. And they're for different reasons every time. A lot of it had to do with my temper, a lot of it had to do with maybe I was just feeling really beat up. I've even gone after I broke up with ex-girlfriends of mine because I'm someone who definitely, definitely invests a lot into people that are around me. And when someone who I've invested a lot of my time in and I've really felt like I was gaining some loyalty through, if something doesn't go right, and I'm not saying I'm not going to get into details, but whatever that problem is, that is something that I take really hard. And for me, I'm a, I'm a very big grudge holder. And it's not something I like, but it's something that causes me to struggle long term with a lot of things that I have dealt with in my past. And one of the big things that I think you really need to understand is a psychology term. And what it is, is it's cognitive reframing. Cognitive reframing essentially is the ability to look back at a past event, usually a negative past event, and see the positive spin on it. And it might be a very, very small positive spin. But at the end of the day, that positive spin is going to be what gets you through feeling those negative feelings and start to look at that little positive every time you think of that situation. So for instance, a breakup. What can you learn from that breakup? Because breakups are horrible, especially long-term ones. If you're in a long, deep relationship, what is the positive out of that that you can take away? What did you learn from that negative experience that somehow is going to better you today as the person you are now? A divorce, let's say your parents get divorced. What is the positive outcome out of that? There's plenty of times where my parents probably could have got divorced and they probably should have, but money was the reason they didn't. It was too stressful. It was overwhelming. And think about it from that perspective. If you're getting a divorce, that's, there's very few positives from that. But if you're the person who's in that divorce, I guarantee you there's some, there some big positives that are coming out of that. It's just about how you're looking at it. And what I'm kind of getting at here, guys, is 
the overarching theme I want to mention is the perspective you're looking at each situation with and the way you're living your life is going to be huge for your success right now and your success going forward. There's definitely points in time where I'm doubting myself. I don't even know who I am. I'm trying to figure that out. But the big things that I've found really to help me is doing things spontaneously, doing things that I've never done before, traveling by myself, going to the restaurant by myself, eating by myself, reading, doing things that I haven't done before that really put me outside of my comfort zone. And it's so cliche, but when you're outside of your comfort zone, you start to learn about what you really love to do, what is pulling you, what has that force that's driving you towards it that you always are feeling within yourself because chances are there's something there. And if you're not able to find that, you need to just stop and slow down and listen a little bit more to who you are as a person. Stop listening to outside factors. Stop letting them control what you want to do and allow yourself to just do what you want for once and see if you actually notice a benefit from that in many ways. See if you start to excel with what you're doing. See if you start to enjoy your life a little bit more. See if you have a little bit more happiness day in and day out. One thing I, I really understand and I, have, I really want everyone to understand is that we are not on this planet forever. Two of my best friends have lost their parents very, very close to me. Now, this isn't like losing my own parent, but I think in a, in a sick, twisted way, in my selfish manner, it's taught me a lot. And by no means do I ever wish this upon anyone. But at the same time, what it's made me realize is that literally things can be gone in an instant. Like I said, two of my best friends lost their parents. One, their dad to cancer. One, their mom to cancer. Both while I was in high school. And being someone who's that young, seeing something like that happen to people who are very close to me, people I would consider my best friends, people I love and care about, and also, the people that they lost were people that I knew directly, people that I did love and care about too. And it's not the same at all, but what it allows me to understand is that you need to be strong through it all. There's times where you can absorb what's going on and you need to grieve, you need to explain how you're feeling, what's going on inside of you. But at, at a certain point also, you need to keep on keeping on because whatever is going on, whatever's happening, the world is going to be moving on and you need to just understand what happened here and see that for what it is instead of just living the rest of your life thinking, oh, yep, another day, yep, gonna have another one tomorrow and the next day. No, 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 change your perspective from situations like that and understand that when we are here, it is a special, special thing. It's a miracle in itself. So when you have another day that you wake up and you feel the energy that you feel because you're freaking alive and you're breathing energy, you're breathing oxygen, you're not breathing energy, you feel energy. And those things in itself should be enough for you to get kickstarted and move and do things that you love and go out and see the world. That in itself should be motivation enough. The fact that we're not on this planet forever. And a lot of times it's crippling. I used to cry all the time when I was, a, I think I was a sophomore in high school. I was like, I was borderline, at, like, a, uh, what is it, a hypochondriac. I was always worried. My mom is a cancer survivor. She had stage four breast cancer when I was younger. It removed her thyroid. She has her full thyroid removed. She has a double mastectomy. And at the exact same time, my aunt, who actually was my mom's best friend, still is my mom's best friend. She also went and got a mammogram done. Turns out, my aunt had cancer at the exact same time my mom did. And what was the craziest part of this all for me is I was a five-year-old kid, and I didn't know anything other than my mom was sick. But as I got older, I started to realize that, holy shit, my mom could have not been here for my whole life. From the point I was five years old on, my mom could have passed away, and I could have grown up without a mom. That right there is just mind-boggling to me. And the way I see that is I'm grateful and I'm going to utilize the time that I have with her and the time that I have on this earth to the best of my abilities because I never know when that's going to end. When I was a senior in high school, she had two stints put in her heart. She had 98% blockage in her arteries, in one of her arteries specifically. Two of them were, were pretty blocked. And essentially you put stints in to allow the blockage to... Um, 
to basically dissipate and she almost had a massive heart attack from that. Thankfully she works at Freighter, which is a hospital locally here, but she was having chest pains and she's a tough woman. She's like, uh, nah, nah, nah. One of her nurses told her, hey Gail, just go, go get it checked out. And why I'm talking about this and why I'm bringing you all into this perspective is people ask me why I stay motivated, how I stay motivated, what gets me going. And simply, it's my family making them proud I've never, we've never had a ton of money. I'm living in the same house I've always lived in my whole life. I still live at home. Um, I just finally leased a car for the first time on my own. I'm not, we don't have a ton of money. I, 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 we've never had something, I've never had tons of things handed to me. I've never, I paid for college on my own. Um, there's a lot of things that, that you kind of need to understand in terms of the perspective that gives me the feelings that I do and the motivation that I do every single day. I'm lazy just like everyone else though. Don't get me wrong, this morning when I woke up at 7.30 right now in the morning, I did not want to get up. I did not want to get up, but I knew right when my feet hit the ground that I'm gonna be up, and once your feet are moving, you're not gonna go back to sleep. But I can tell you, I'm caffeine addicted. I have caffeine problems. I probably had 700 milligrams of caffeine yesterday. Um, I under ate yesterday. I have a really bad problem with under eating um, because I'm so stressed and I'm so busy. This is the point in time I've never been more stressed out in my life. But at the same time, the stress that I'm feeling right now has never been more enjoyable stress, if that makes any sense at all. I'm more stressed than I ever have been. I'm more confused than I ever have been. But at the same time, I have more clarity than I ever have. And I am happier than I ever have been. I know that sounds very backwards and it sounds like they're two polar opposites. But... In reality, this is exactly what I want to be doing. Now, work is work. You're going to be working no matter what. Anyone who tells you out there that, oh, you, you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life, that's absolute bullshit. You work. You can do things you like, but there's work involved. Don't get it twisted. What I do every day here, when I'm answering DMs for hours a day, when I'm answering my client text message for hours a day, when I'm filming a YouTube video, when I'm exporting it and editing it into my, into my uh, iMovie and I really need to, to get that thing done quick and it, the export doesn't work, or when my phone is dead because it just decides to take a poop on me, or when I'm trying to take photos, and there's just so many things, it never is ending. There's always things I could be doing. And then you talk about AB visuals, I got weddings to do, all that. It's like, there's always stuff to be done. There's always things on my plate. And I love that. If you're bored, you're doing something wrong, is what I say, especially in, as an adult. If there's times where you're, doing, you're not doing anything and you could be working towards something and you know deep down you could because that's something you, you, you're passionate about, you're going to regret that. And what's the saying? It's this. It's, we must all suffer from one of two pains in life. The pain of discipline or the pain of regret. The difference is discipline weighs ounces while regret weighs tons. And what I want you to understand is everyone has problems, everyone has things that are going on in their life and I really, really understand that more than you guys may know. I'm good at faking it, I'm good at not portraying the, the, the side of myself which has depression, which has anxiety, which has dealt with things that most everybody in the world does and when you put yourself on social media when you put yourself on Instagram when you put yourself Twitter YouTube whatever you're subjecting yourself to that and if you have thin skin well good luck because the world will eat you alive especially on social media and a lot of times guys like I said it comes down to just giving yourself some perspective understanding that life moves on and that we aren't here forever so you better get your ass moving Hopefully this helps you guys. I know it was a little bit random, but uh, I'll talk to you guys very soon. Thanks for watching.